Financial Services Committee, Joint Economic Committee, Chairman of the Domestic Monetary Policy Subcommittee. Uh, Congressman, it's uh, Chairman, great to see you. Um, what, Thank you. You have some good questions for, uh, to give to the journalists for Chairman Bernanke today? Well, uh, of course, I'm not going to be there, and I can't ask the questions. And sometimes when I ask the questions before the banking committee, he doesn't answer them anyway. But uh, the real question is, is uh, when is he going to admit that the current policy is a total failure and that mon monetary manipulation is, ap is actually opposite of what capitalism is all about, and you can't fix interest rates. And uh, if you look at the last three years, no new jobs, still 33 million people unemployed. Uh, the money now sits in the reserves and now is leaking out and going into commodities. And now we have the inflation. He doesn't talk about the exit strategy anymore. Uh, when is he going to admit that you have to have something new and different uh, to, uh, to solve our problems? And if you did, let, I know you announced, uh, and if you were elected uh, president in 2012, what, what what would you do immediately and what would you what action would you take vis-a-vis -vis the Fed and, and a lot of other issues? Well, a lot of other issues. The spending is the big issue and the Fed is the problem because if you didn't have the Fed to buy the debt, interest rates would go up. You know, we can borrow so much and tax so much. And if interest rates would go up and the whole burden and the responsibility of that fell on the Congress, they'd have to cut spending. They couldn't do it. But the Fed facilitates this and they buy the debt and keep interest rates artificially low and messes up the whole concept of savings. So what you have to do is cut the spending, but you can't cut spending until people have a consensus. You know, nobody wants their entitlement cut, but they want the budget balance. But I, I would say that the most immediate thing a president can do is deal with the foreign policy because uh, we have this silly myth going around that wars get us out of, uh, out of depression. That, that is the worst myth in the world that World War II got us out of the depression and that war stimulates the economy. It's exactly the opposite. The cost of war is, is all a negative to the economy. So a president can do a lot about that and start bringing our troops home and spending that money here at home and reducing the spending. But then get the Congress. I mean, the president is not a dictator, and I don't believe in that. But you have to lead the way, and you have to get the Congress to cut back on the spending and just refuse to sign the bills. Veto the bills until they come up with some real spending cuts. And uh, I think the markets would respond very favorably. I think if all of a sudden we were going to spend uh, hundreds of billions of dollars less in Germany and Japan and Korea and the Middle East, I think all of a sudden people say, hey, that makes sense. That money's going to come back home. The dollar would be strengthening rather than following this policy of deliberately weakening the dollar, believing, oh, that's going to enhance exports and all this nonsense. Uh, why, why, should we, why should we follow a policy where you deliberately devalue your currency? You tell savers, well, our policy is to have a 10% devaluation this year. And if you look at gold, it's a lot more rapid than that. It's a rapid devaluation. It was big news in 71 when they went... Uh, uh, a 7% devaluation. Now it's constant, and they think it's going to help. Although, it's, it's a failed policy. Mr. Chairman, the, the argument for devaluing the currency, not that you'd ever get the Fed to admit this, the argument for devaluing it is we owe foreigners so much money. If you devalue the currency, then it means, in effect, that you owe people overseas a lot less money. Is that, you think, an well, intentional I'll tell you policy? What, you you, you have tapped on it. And, and I went through Bernanke's, all his writings, and I think he really believes that. That's my conclusion. And I think that's the conclusion of all, uh, of all major states when they get beyond the point where they can pay down their debt. Debt has to be liquidated, and that's what recessions are all about, but we don't allow the liquidation. We transfer a bad debt, you know, from uh, the, the banks and the mortgage companies over to the taxpayers. But debt has to be liquidated. Japan wouldn't allow the liquidation, but governments liquidate by devaluing the currency. So let's, have, uh, let's devalue the currency by 50 percent. Our $14 trillion debt is $7 trillion in real terms. I think you're exactly right. I think it's deliberate, and they don't care about penalizing the people who save and penalizing the average person who can't hardly pay their food bills right now. And this is the reason there are riots around the world. It's food prices are going up, and they're liable to come here at the rate we're going unless we change monetary policy. Given the, the, our central bank and central banks around the world, you've seen the move in gold and silver. It, it, I'm sure you think that's warranted, but um, what do you think gold and silver really, where do you think they deserve to trade given what you've seen globally with the central banks? 
Well, well that's one thing uh, somebody who believes in free markets don't like to venture out and say, oh, you know, I know the gold's going to $3,000 an ounce. What, what I think about is how far will they devalue the currency? If they continue to do this, it'll be infinity because the currency will have no value and gold will go up to infinity. But uh, the, 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 uh, the constant spending and the monetizing debt is going to continue this process and uh, it, cannot, it cannot be helpful. So anticipating is one thing and knowing the direction is another thing, but you don't know exactly the timing. You know, gold could go down $200 in the next week and nobody mm. could prevent it, but it wouldn't change, it wouldn't change anything. Uh, but on long term, it's going to go up. I mean, this was a dramatic event for me. The, the dramatic event for me was 1971, August 15th, when they said no more restraint on monetary authorities and go and look at the charts from 1971. Spending, the size of government, fighting wars, inflation, and the, the constancy of you know, the business cycle, and then waiting for the big one. And we're in the middle of the big one, and they're lost because all they have left is printing money, and it does not reassure the markets. It does not help unemployment. It does in, not encourage savings. You can't have capitalism without savings and growth. And where does capital go under these conditions? Out. It goes out of the country. Jobs go out. Productivity goes out. And people can outcompete us, and that's why we're losing the Con fight. Here. Congressman Paul, early in the show, we were talking about the extension of the debt ceiling. Is it your sense that that is going to be uh, subject to a lot of political brinksmanship, or is that going to sort of sail through? No, I, I don't think it'll sail through. No, that'll be a lot. You know, I often predicted, but not with total assurance, that the continuing resolution would pass, uh, and, and it did at the last minute, uh, you know, and extend, extend, and they finally passed it. Uh, so I think the debt increase will be passed. There will be some noise about what are you going to promise us, but the promises will have no value, and, uh, and then people will say, well, no, the, the fear is built up that the whole world will come to an end if we don't do this. Uh, you know, if we don't raise the debt limit. But, but right now, you know, you can go over the debt limit for two or three months. What well, keeps them from going over the debt limit for six months? There's always a way to get around it. And besides, what the Fed does is secret anyway. They can do about anything they want and promising, well, we'll see. Just yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like it could be weather or something. That shot just froze. Uh, if we can get it fixed Bahia. in the next couple of seconds, we'll make sure that uh, we do get back to him, but obviously there's been a lot of weather around uh, the mm -hmm. country, especially in the central parts of the country. Looks like that shot is still frozen, but uh, we do have him coming back and joining us again tomorrow. Yeah. Be... Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Let me see. Uh, Congressman, are you back with us now? I'm back with okay, you. Okay, great. Um, are you there? Yeah, okay. we're here. <laughs> it, it, I'm just wondering, in a perfect world, what would you do with the Fed? I, I mean, this today's attempt is at more transparency. You just said they do everything in, in secret. If you did become president, I mean, what would you try? How would you try to change our, our, the system that we, we have right now? Well, we, we live in an imperfect world. We always will. Because we live in an imperfect world, you don't want one person uh, dictating interest rates. So the, in the imperfect world where you have to have uh, supply and demand of both money and services and goods, you, you want freedom. You want freedom of choice and free markets. So you want to get rid of the Fed. But right now, the most important thing, and which is happening, we're making a success, and that is transparency. That's what's happening today. This is a result of a couple of years of intense effort to expose the Fed for what they've been up to. So this is tremendous. And we've had, uh, and the Fed has delivered some information to us, not with our yelling and screaming, and they do not uh, readily cooperate with us, but at least we're getting information. I mean, just the fact that we know that a third of the uh, trillions of dollars they spent, uh, you know, in the last couple of years went to foreign banks. That annoys Americans, especially when the, the people here in this country lost their mortgages, lost their jobs, and lost their homes. And here we're sending money, you know, to foreign banks. So, mm -hmm. no, it's coming out, and, and, and that will serve our purpose to, you know, the Fed is, and I'm not going to uh -huh. be able to get rid of the Fed, but we have to weaken the Fed. Eventually, the most important thing we do is take away the power of the mm -hmm. Fed to monetize debt, and that would curtail the wild growth of government. You think your, your son would be a good veep? I mean, I'm Paul, 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 that might, I don't know. That, uh, it's got a weird sound, Paul, Paul. Um, I don't know, just, uh, just a thought. <laughs> That, is, that, that would be that would be a little unusual. Yeah, I don't be. think that, that's <laughs> in the Bush, plan. Bush, Bush, Bush was uh, two different times. That's uh, usually wait eight years between. Yeah. yeah. All right. Th th our thanks, uh, Congressman Paul. Thank.